This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Screencasts Online, your source for new Mac and iOS tutorials every week. To learn more and for a 14-day free trial, visit screencastsonline.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, every year I go to NAB, every year I meet some new people, and sometimes I even get them back, which I always enjoy when they have new products, and this time that's what's happening today. Um, I've got Jim Tierney back from Digital Anarchy to talk about their new product, Samurai Sharpening. Jim, it's great to have you back. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Chuck, for having me. So we'll, we'll talk about the rest of, uh, of, of Digital Anarchy stuff later, but for right now, let's just get into uh, Samurai Sharpening, what it is, who it's for, and what it does. Uh, so Samurai Sharpen is a plugin that we just released. It's uh, obviously for doing sharpening the video. Uh, it's a plugin for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut. Uh, we plan on doing an Avid and OpenFX version, which will be Resolve and Sony Vegas and all that. Uh, that's coming up in probably... A month or two, uh, and so what it is is a plugin to uh, make it easier to sharpen video, and um, it has a bunch of really interesting tools built into it, like built-in masks, so that you can protect uh, shadow areas which tend to be very noisy, uh, which you really don't want to sharpen. Uh, so there's ways to protect the highlights, protect the shadow areas, and really just kind of sharpen just the portions of the video that you want. Uh, and then there's other you know, one of the problems with sharpening video is it's very easy to end up with motion artifacts and all sorts of undesirable things. And so you really want to be very subtle about it. And so we also have a bunch of controls built in to, you know, make it very easy to fine tune the, the sharpening to get kind of the look you want. For those folks out there that aren't familiar with this stuff, what does sharpening mean? I mean, I, th I think the novice would have his his or her idea, but what what are you actually doing to the video to sharpen it? So really what sharpening is, it's a contrast adjustment, right? So it's whenever you sharpen either a photo or a video or, or whatever, um, you're taking the edges and making one side of it darker and one side of it lighter. And that gives the perception of you know, in, increased sharpness. And so those are called halos. Uh, you know, usually you don't see them. Um, but, you know, if you really push sharpening, you, you know, if you really crank the amount up or something, you will start to see the dark side and the light side of the, of the edge. Um, and one of the nice things about Samurai is that you can adjust the opacity of those edges, uh, or those halos, individually. And that's a pretty uncommon feature within uh, you know, sharpening plugins generally. And it really allows you to kind of push, push the sharpening a little bit further and then dial back just the areas that become a problem. Okay, the, this is something I'm, I've not seen, definitely not in video, that you have almost selective sharpening of the, the areas that you're looking to sharpen. Yeah. And it's, you know, we, we thought it was pretty important for video because, you know, it's you can have a lot of noise, and you really don't want to sharpen the noise. And so having ways to prevent that from happening is, uh, I think, pretty critical. So. so I can denoise my image and then sharpen it? Yes. Yeah, you you want to denoise it. If you're going to do a denoise pass, you'd want to denoise it first and then do the sharpening on top of that. Because you, you know, the, less, the less noise that you're sharpening, you know, the better off the image is going to be. Right, but sure. I, but I want to make sure that I'm not losing anything by um, by denoising something that I, I really want to sharpen. That makes sense. Yeah, it's well, you know, it's 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 a balance between you know usually where noise shows up most is in the shadow areas, and you know, it, it's it's a trade off with the, the denoise plugins. Um, you know, how much are you denoising and how much are you softening the image? You know, because frequently when you denoise, you know, the entire image, uh, you end up softening, you know, like Beautybox, for example, is kind of a denoiser, 
where we're just softening the skin areas. Uh, and you see that with denoisers well, the, where they'll just soften the entire image. And so you, know, you want to tweak the denoise settings so that you're not losing those, fi those, those details that you want to keep and just getting rid of the noise and the areas that you yeah, yeah. want to this almost seems to be a theme for, for you, or is it just becoming more common that you mentioned Beauty Box, which we talked about at NAB, the idea that you are just trying to apply effects to certain areas and very specialized, um, in this case, denoisers to the areas that just need it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's one of the things about plugins is that we're trying to make things easier. I mean, traditionally with beauty work, you're talking about having a bunch of different, you know, the, the artist has to manually create these masks and, uh, you know, it's a very time consuming process. And that's the way it is with a lot of video. I mean, it's very easy with photos, right? It's like, you know, you've got one image and it's very simple to create a mask and it's not that big of a deal. But then suddenly you've got, you know, 30 frames a second and you're dealing with video and it's not as easy to just go like, all right, well, I'm just going to grab the pen tool and mask out this like blemish or whatever. Uh, you know, you have to start worrying about like, all right, how is that blemish moving? What's going to happen to, you know, is the actor going off screen and coming back on screen? Uh, and so it's really important to be able to track, you know, in the case of beauty box, just the skin tone areas and in the case of samurai sharpen, you know, just paying attention to the dark shadow areas. Um, and with video, it's like, you really do want to track those things over time. Because uh, I mean, that's what's going to make the plugin valuable to a video editor or artist is that they don't have to go in there and manually create those masks and animate masks over time and, and all that. So uh, it's really for us, it's really important to actually. I mean, we're trying to solve problems, and you know, we're not trying to. <laughs> you know, if you just create a sharpen filter that just sharpens everything, um, you know, that's not going to be as useful as something that. It lets you selectively do it um, over time. Now, in, in a given clip, let's say, do I have the option to take section A and and mask it out so that I'm not applying any sharpening, section B that I want to apply a lot of sharpening to, and maybe section C and D that I only want to apply a little bit of sharpening to? Or is are we, are we sort of in an A-B situation where, yes, it's going to sharpen over here, but no, it's not going to sharpen over there? It's kind of, it's, it's, it's sort of based on colors, right? So there's the masking is for shadows and highlights. So you can mask out the uh, those color ranges, but not necessarily. You know, I just want to have uh, you know sharpening here and sharpening there. Uh, it's more of a, a color based masking tool, okay. you know, as opposed to you know you know there's plenty of tools within. Premiere and After Effects and Final Cut that will let you, you know, mask out, you know, say you just want to sharpen the eyes. Um, you know, there are ways to do it in Samurai, uh, but if you really, if that's really the only thing that you want to have sharpened, uh, you can, you know, just use a mask and, uh, you know, track that area, you know, within the host application. And this is pretty much a real time application. Yeah, it's it's. Mostly real time. <laughs> okay, I mean, as the machines get more powerful, you know, things things are happening definitely a lot faster. There was a time you had to do something and then walk away for thirty minutes, but yeah. um, now it's it's. I'm not going to say it's one hundred percent real time, but it it's happening pretty darn fast. Yeah, I mean, everything's GPU accelerated, so you know, it's really reliant on the speed of the GPU. So if you've got one of the newer high end like Nvidia cards. Uh, you know, they're, they're super fast, and you probably will get real-time performance. Uh, if you have a slower video card, then that's going to affect performance you know, one way or the other. Uh, Premiere is really good about it. Um, they use the GPU really efficiently, so you'll you usually see, see real-time performance in Premiere. Uh, Final Cut's close, and then After Effects right now is probably the slowest of the three apps that Samurai supports at the moment. When we scheduled this event, as we recorded this, it was about a week ago, and then right in between, of course, Apple does exactly what you would expect. They release a new version of Final Cut. <laughs> Did this have any effect on, on uh, Samurai, or is it just just part of the infrastructure? No, I mean, it's, 
you know, Apple kind of gives us a heads up about stuff that's going to happen regarding plugins. Uh, so we knew that was coming uh, and, you know, had the plugins pretty much ready to go uh, for their release. Did you have any pro- problems uh, with with uh, moving to Sierra with with Samurai or, for that matter, any of the digital Anarchy plugins? No, I mean, it's, we, um, I mean, we stay on top of the new OS releases and, um, you know, we pay attention to what's coming down the line. So it's, uh, definitely, you know, usually we should have it. If there's any problems, they should be fixed before, um, you know, you guys see them. Um, but, uh, but usually Apple's, you know, reasonably good about not breaking things. And so it really hasn't been you know, that much of a problem. Good. That's always good to hear. That's yeah. always good to hear. Before I forget it, what kind of pricing do we have for uh, for Samurai? So Samurai is normally one twenty nine. Uh, it's on special right now for ninety nine, um, and that's so yeah. So it's one twenty nine normally ninety nine bucks until November fifteenth. Till fifteenth. Okay. Good. Good. Um, give us a quick rundown on all the other digital anarchy plugins, um, just so folks sure. kind of have a, an idea of where Samurai fits into uh, to your product structure. Yeah, so Samurai is you know the latest plugin. Uh, we have three other video plugins and a, a bunch of Photoshop plugins. Uh, we're pretty focused on video these days, so that's where you're going to see most of the new products uh, address. But we have Beauty Box, which is uh, the plugin we're probably most famous for, which is for doing automated skin retouching. And, you know, I referenced it a little bit earlier. And what that does is it identifies skin tones in the video footage, tracks those skin tones, and then uh, smooths out just those skin areas. So it's very effective. It's used on a lot of feature films, music videos, um, corporate work, you know, all sorts of things. Um, anywhere where you need to kind of take the edge off of what HD and 4K are, are showing us. Because, you know, we're seeing all these details that we don't necessarily want to see. Um, you know, wrinkles and high definition. <laughs> Mosquito bites and... <laughs> Mosquito bites and blemishes yeah. and all of it. And yeah. Especially now with 4K, it's like, you, know, you see these like 80-inch screens and you've got these talking heads on these 80-inch screens and it's like it's larger than life size. <laughs> so so it, hel- it helps with that. Uh, Flickr Free has been super successful for us. Uh, that was released a couple of years ago and uh, eliminates Flickr from video. Uh, we originally designed it for doing for deflickering time lapse, uh, which it does great. But uh, it turns out that it's also very good at deflickering slow motion footage. Um, uh, when you have problems with the camera and lights being out of sync, and you get these kind of rolling band effects, uh, it solves that problem as well. So it's, it's pretty effective at deflickering all sorts of different types of uh, footage. And, um, and then we have Light Wrap Fantastic, which uh, is basically a tool to help with green screen uh, compositing. So it just wraps the background around the edge of the uh, subject and just gives you a little bit more convincing composite. So, so just all kind of little tricks and, and magic to do with video is what yeah. it amounts to. Yeah, you know, just trying to make things easier for video editors and visual effects artists and trying to save them time and create plugins that are really easy to use so that you don't have to spend, you know, three days watching training videos because that's not really what editors want to do. It's like, you know, if you're in the middle of a video editing project, you really just want, you've got a problem, you want to drop a plugin on it and it solves it without you having to spend, you know, two hours watching training videos, trying to figure out all the sliders and all that. So we really focus on making it, you know, one, doing what we say it's going to do, whether it's skin retouching or deflickering or whatever, but then making it really, really simple or as simple as possible and still have that functionality. That's an interesting phrase. And I think in today's world, it's just more and more that we try to simplify things, but you're trying to hit that balance between simplification and control and fine fine grain control and so when you look at something that somebody says well it's simple and it has 25 sliders or 25 settings well there's there's a reason you know you might not have to use them all but they need to be there for the people that really do need to use them and know how to use them well but you know as a plugin developer there's a lot of things you know you can combine parameters so that i mean you have to look at what 
what are most people going to use this for? And you can have these parameters in there that make a tiny bit of difference, but you know the you know ninety nine point nine percent of people are never going to use that, and so it's like it's it's calling those types of parameters. Uh, getting a single parameter to kind of do what three parameters could do, um, and just get you know the the most common functionality out of it. Uh, you know, you can always have like a hundred parameters in there, and they all you know, they'll they'll all do like little tweaks. But you know, how often are, are people really going to use it? And you know, what's the what's the effect that they're going for? And really, just trying to simplify it, just. Looking at it and saying, "What can we do programmatically to make it easier for you?" Um, and just just combine things where we can, eliminate things where we can, and just try and keep it simple. Yeah, and I wish more companies uh, would do at least some of that because they seem to be obsessed with the idea that okay, you can tweak every single parameter out yes. there. And again, there's probably an audience for that, but it's such a limited audience, and otherwise, we're back to your three, four, five hours of training videos. Right. So, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, there is a, there are a few people out there that may need, like, all of those parameters, but most people are just going to look at it and go, like, I don't have any idea what any of this stuff does, and they're not going to use it. And so, you know, by simplifying it, it makes it much more accessible, and if you do it right, you still have 99% of the power that you would have even if we had all those you know, 100 parameters listed. So. Um, I, I do have to follow up on one thing you said. Why have you made the move more toward video these days and away from the, the still images? Just bigger market, more more challenges, better challenges? Uh, it seems to be what we know, <laughs> to be honest. You know, we started off doing After Effects plugins. That was you know, what the company originally started doing. Uh, and then, so we started off with video and then we got into doing Photoshop stuff. Uh, at one point we, you know, sold off our video products to, you know, another company and just focused exclusively on Photoshop. And we just found that it was just a harder market for us. I guess, you know, maybe we just didn't understand photographers well enough or, I mean, Photoshop's interesting because it's, it's huge, but you know, people are using it for so many different things. You know, Photoshop, you know, photographers make up probably about 15% of their market, which is, which always surprised me. It's like, but, you know, it's, it's used for medical imaging and architectural stuff and just all these other different uses that have nothing to do really with photography. Um, and, it, you know, we just, found that we just have a better read on what videographers need, video editors and visual effects artists. And so, you know, we just made the kind of decision to kind of go focus back into that because, you know, it seems to be what we knew, know, we're successful with it, and uh, it's just a cool space to be in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely that. And it does seem to be, uh, strange as this may sound, it seems to be a little less crowded. I mean, yes, there are a lot of plug-in manufacturers out there, but... The Photoshop stuff is even crazier. So, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, there's certainly more customers on the Photoshop side, but because it's so spread out, it's a lot harder to market to all those people. And so, as a small company, I mean, we're only four people. Um, it's a little bit harder to have the marketing budget to really reach all the Photoshop people that you need in order to you know, really have a successful product. Uh, with video, it's it's a little bit smaller market. Um, and it's a little bit more homogenous in the sense that people tend to hang out in the same places, you know, online and read, you know, there's only a few magazines. Um, you know, there's really, at least with After Effects, there's probably three different forums that people hang out in. You know, whereas if you look at any Photoshop set, you know, photography segment, you know, there's like 20 different sites for like sports photographers and senior photographers and <laughs> wedding photographers and, you know, all of it. And there's, you know, so it's, a little bit harder to reach all those people. Interesting. I hadn't exactly thought about it that way. Filmmakers are filmmakers, and there are some specialties, but photographers do seem to be really, really, really specialized. Yeah, it's really specialized. And you have all these verticals, and, you know, it's like every vertical, you know, like, like I was saying, like wedding photographers, sports, seniors, school, whatever. Um, 
you know, they're all they're all about the same size as the video market, although video is growing actually by leaps and bounds. But um, but there's just a lot more diversity in terms of forums that they hang out in, you know, magazines, stuff like that. So we just like video. It's and you know, it's just fun to see your stuff used for feature films. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. To be honest. I bet. You know, so that's one. That's one nice aspect of it. It's it's a really fun space to be in. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're focused on, and we do it well. So we know yeah. what we're doing. You'll be signing autographs after the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we don't actually do the effects on the feet. Film. They just use our stuff. Oh, just use your stuff. Okay. Well, I was trying. I was trying. We don't, have, we don't have to deal with any of the Hollywood drama. Which I'm <laughs> Jim, where do we send folks to learn more about Samurai and, and all of the Digital Anarchy products? Uh, it's digitalanarchy.com. And uh, yeah, that's our website. You can sign up for our newsletter, get more information. Uh, we've got you know some free video or free plugins up there as well as the paid ones. Uh, we just came out with a new version of our free plugin, Ugly Box. Uh, which does exactly the opposite of Beauty Box. Uh, it makes you look worse. Uh, so, why now? I know on Halloween. Okay, maybe, but why would you want to release a plugin that would make me look worse? Halloween. You know, oh, it's, okay. a it's a gag. It's a gag plugin. I mean, okay. it's not. I mean, that's why it's free, right? It's like yeah. We're, we're not expecting people to to pay for that, uh, but it's a fun little uh, you know, it's a fun little plugin that uh, you know if you're trying to. You know, make a witch look worse or turn Santa into a Grinch or something like that. Uh, you know, it's there. It's free. <laughs> uh, I love talking to creative people because they just come up with some of the craziest ideas. And, yeah, you know, that's okay. I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy well, it. You, know, we've, you don't even have to buy it. You can just download it for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's like, but we have the skin mask. So we're like, all right, well, we can take, you know, the opposite of blurring is sharpening. And so it just uh, allows you to pop out the blemishes and wrinkles and change the skin color and stuff like that. It's mm. fun. Okay, so I can, I can t with Beauty Box I can take myself back to about twenty two, and with <laughs> with Ugly Box I can go to one hundred and twenty. Right? So exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that'll be the project for this weekend. <laughs> hey Jim, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for the time and uh, and the information. And, and I guess if I don't see you before, I'll see you at NAB. Yes, absolutely. We'll All be right. there. All right. All right. Take, Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. If you're into video, check out Digital Anarchy. Definitely go check out Samurai Sharp and, uh, and add it to your toolkit. And Ugly Box, too. Why not? <laughs> Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com. <laughs>